you think? Did I wash my hands the right way? Health experts say washing your hands reduces the spread of viruses and other organisms that cause disease. This advice may sound simple. However, experts say a lot of people do not follow it. Infections can spread by touching surfaces that have harmful organisms on them. Shaking hands with another person also can spread infection. Harmful bacteria may enter your body if you touch your mouth, nose, or eyes. Please listen and watch closely as we're going to give you the inside story on hand washing and why it's so important in stopping the spread of bacteria and harmful illnesses. Bacteria can reproduce every 20 minutes. The number of bacteria on your body right now is greater than the number of people in the United States. Like people, bacteria may be good or bad, depending on what they do to you or for you. And like people, bacteria are here to stay. We can't get rid of them, so we must learn to live with them. Some bacteria spend their lives in the small folds of the skin, on hair or under fingernails. Others cause body odor. Still others, called pathogens, cause disease. We'll call the bacteria normally found on your skin resident bacteria. They exist on the skin of normal, healthy people and are usually not harmful. They're always there and can't be removed completely. Other bacteria are transferred to your skin in one way or another. Let's call these transient bacteria. Think for a moment about how many ways your hands have picked up bacteria today. Your hands do all sorts of things for you. They write, pick up the telephone, handle money and fix meals, dress wounds. Your hands gather bacteria with each job they do. You can remove many of these bacteria by washing your hands and scrubbing your fingernails. We can't see individual bacteria without using a microscope. But if they are allowed to grow and multiply on auger, we can see them. We transferred bacteria to auger plates by touching them with our fingers. First, we touched a plate with dirty fingers. Then we rinsed the fingers in cold water for 20 seconds. Next, we washed them with soap and water for 20 seconds. The fingers were then washed an additional 20 seconds. Finally, we dipped the fingers in a sanitizing solution containing chlorine. We could have obtained similar results with a bromide or iodine solution. The fingers touched an auger plate after each cleansing. The plates were incubated at 98 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours. The photos show what happened. Unwashed hand. The dirty fingers contained so many bacteria that the areas they touched on the auger plate were masses of colonies. Rinsed hand. The 20-second cold water rinse removed large particles of dirt and some bacteria, but millions of bacteria were left. As you can see, rinsing your hands with cold water is not a very good way to clean them. Washed hand. Washing the hands with soap and water for 20 seconds reduced the number of bacteria. However, 20 seconds was not long enough. After the hands were washed again with soap and water for 20 seconds, the number of bacteria decreased even more. So hands should be washed at least 40 seconds with soap and water. Washing them a full minute is even better. The photos show that soap and water will reduce the number of bacteria on your hands. Removing all bacteria is impossible with soap and water. The important thing is to reduce the number of transient bacteria on your hands. Just be sure to wash your hands thoroughly for at least 40 seconds before you handle food. Sanitized hand. No bacteria grew on the auger plate after the fingers were dipped in a sanitizing solution. Antibacterial soap or a mixture of a tablespoon of bleach and a gallon of water make good sanitizing solutions, but it's best to get professional advice on the exact mixtures. The bacteria may or may not have been killed, but the sanitizer stopped their growth. Of course, some people may not be able to use a sanitizing solution because it may irritate their skin. Sanitizer on sneeze. 
This photo dramatizes the effect of sanitizing agents on bacteria. An auger plate was sneezed on, and then a drop of sanitizing solution was put in the center of the plate. Bacteria grew in the area not touched by the sanitizer. Like your hands, gloves also become dirty and covered with bacteria. In the next demonstration, a person wearing a dirty glove touched an auger plate. He then rinsed the glove in cold water for 20 seconds, washed it with soap and water for 20 seconds, then washed it again with soap and water for 20 seconds, and finally dipped it into a sanitizing solution. After each cleansing, he touched an auger plate. The photographs show how the plates looked after 24 hours. Unwashed glove. The dirty glove contained many bacteria, as shown by the large number of colonies left on the auger. Rinsed glove. The number of colonies decreased after the glove was rinsed in water. As you can see, we can reduce the number of bacteria on gloves by just rinsing them in water. Washed glove. The two 20-second washes with soap and water reduced the number of bacteria to a very low level. Soap and water are better than a plain water rinse for removing bacteria from gloves. Sanitized glove. The sanitizing solution stopped all bacteria from growing. Removing bacteria from the glove was easier than from the hands. Gloves have no resident bacteria, only transient bacteria. Gloves have no ridges or crevices in which the bacteria can hide. It's possible to remove all bacteria from gloves, although we can't remove all of them from our hands. Hair. Well-kept hair is attractive, but let's keep it out of our food. Nobody likes to see hair in what he or she is about to eat. It's a good sign that someone didn't follow sanitation rules when the food was processed or prepared. So always wear a hairnet or a hat when you work with food. To demonstrate the importance of this, we placed some human hair on an auger plate and incubated it for 24 hours. Look at the number of bacteria that grew around the hair. Like hands, completely removing bacteria from your hair is impossible. Although you may have just washed it, it still contains many bacteria. Apron. We can also transfer bacteria from dirty aprons to food. We touched a dirty apron to an auger plate and incubated it for 24 hours. The photo shows that the apron contained many bacteria. These bacteria could easily have been transferred to food. This points out the need for wearing clean clothes and clean aprons every day. If your clothes or apron get dirty during the day, change them. Cutting boards are another source of bacteria and should be washed thoroughly after each use. Do not use wooden cutting boards. Bacteria can hide in the wood fiber, making their complete removal impossible. If you use cutting boards or utensils on raw food, don't use them to hold, serve, prepare, or carve cooked food before they are thoroughly cleansed and sanitized. Pests. Flies, roaches, and rats leave bacteria on everything they touch. To illustrate this, we let a cockroach walk on an auger plate. The photo, made after 24 hours, shows the number of bacteria the cockroach left on the plate. Rats, flies, roaches, and other insects leave bacteria as they crawl on food, garbage, and people. So we must all work to keep these pests out of our homes, restaurants, and food processing plants. The time you spend cleaning and sanitizing your food handling equipment is wasted if you allow insects and rats to walk on them after they've been cleaned. Even the best homes, restaurants, and food processing plants have flies, roaches, and other insects from time to time. But these pests should not be allowed to live in these places for long. Ashes from tobacco contain very few bacteria, but foreign material of any kind should not be tolerated in food. Do not smoke and do not allow others to smoke where food is being processed, stored, prepared, or served. Cuts, bruises, and sores on our hands can also carry millions of bacteria. 
If the skin on your hands is broken anywhere, cover the wound completely before handling food. Bacteria carried on hands may cause food to spoil. They may also cause food poisoning and food infection. As bacteria increase, the food develops an odd smell or taste when it is cooked. It just doesn't taste as good as it should. If the bacteria continue to multiply, the uncooked food develops a peculiar smell. As the bacteria develop further, the food becomes slimy. It will be slippery to the touch, like a bar of wet soap. So if you handle or start to eat food with an objectionable smell, taste, or feel, throw it away. Never taste food to see if it's spoiled. It may be. Basic Guidelines Bacteria are everywhere and on everything, so we have to learn to live with them. But we must try to keep the number of bacteria in our food as low as possible. The three C's for wholesome food are keep it clean, cold, and covered. There's another controversy in public restrooms, and that's whether it's better to air dry washed hands or dry them with towels. Which do you think is the best way? Paper towels help brush off and remove germs loosened by washing. Also, using an electric dryer takes more time than using a paper towel. The average time to achieve 95% dryness is 12 seconds with a paper towel versus 43 seconds with a hot air dryer. Few people use hot air dryers long enough to ensure more than 55 to 65% dryness. Most people wipe their wet hands on aprons or something else instead of using these hot air dryers. Don't forget that anything you touch can add bacteria to your hands particularly in restrooms after washing and drying your hands, you use your hands to open the door. Remember that only about 67% of people studied wash their hands after using the restroom. So it might be advisable to open the door with one of those paper towels covering your hand. Then toss the paper towel in the trash as you leave. The most important thing to remember is how bacteria gets on you and use your good judgment in washing your hands frequently to get rid of the bacteria and germs. It's the right thing to do.